Welcome to Module 3, Corrective Patterns. By now, we have completed our first learning object of Module 3, Corrective Patterns, and learned about corrective wave structure, characteristics of zigzags, flats, triangles, and combinations, and rules and guidelines of corrective waves. In this learning object, we will learn about mathematical applications and retracements and targets. What if I told you that at the end of this learning object, you will be able to target each corrective wave using Fibonacci ratios? That's right! Actually project the end of the corrective waves. Do you think that might improve your entry and exit strategy? Vincent Van Gogh once said, If you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. This is the learning object where you might just hear that little voice saying, this is too complicated for me to follow, or I can't do it. Just do the work, and that voice will be silenced. Practice enough, and you will become a master at this learning object. Let's journey back in time again to Fibonacci. We learned that Fibonacci numbers are found in Eliot's waveform. We've also learned that waves unfold in every time frame in more or less the same way as a result of the fractal nature of the market. For example, the basic five-wave impulse and three-wave corrective always subdivides into Fibonacci numbers. One complete cycle has eight waves, and subdividing further, the next cycle has 34 waves, followed by 144 waves. In addition to waveform, Fibonacci ratios are the most important use of the sequence. The rule of divine proportion suggests that the market reacts in accordance to the ratios calculated from the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. For example, proportional relationships exist between the different waves. As such, Fibonacci ratios are used to target the ends of moves. These ratios help to determine price objectives in both impulse and corrective waves. Fibonacci ratios are the primary determinant of the extent of price movements in the markets, so they are an important adjunct to the Elliott Wave principle. Markets retrace in accordance with these ratios. The most common retracements for corrective waves 2 and 4 are 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8%. Projections or extensions have to do with projecting the impulsive waves 1, 3, and 5. Common wave extensions are 161.8%, 261.8%, and 423.6%, which is the least common and only occurs in extended waves. Take a look at this five-wave sequence labeled 1 ABC2, 3 ABC4, and 5. First, a comment about that sequence. We just learned all about corrections and the forms they may take. Here we have a wave 2 correction which is a zigzag and very typical of wave 2s. The wave 4 correction is very different as it takes the shape of an irregular flat where the B wave travels above the top of the previous impulse wave before making its way down in a C wave to complete the correction. Note the wave 4 correction can also be a triangle or one of the complex combos that were described such as double and triple threes combinations. The guideline of alternation also applies since wave 2 is a sharp, simple, zigzag correction and wave 4 is a sideways irregular flat correction. Let's review the personality of wave 2. Wave 2 moves are usually sharp, correcting most of wave 1. Traders still think the wave 1 is a correction in a downtrend, so traders haven't caught on to the possibility that the trend has changed. Therefore, wave 2 usually retraces between 50 and 61.8% of wave 1, not to exceed 100% of wave 1. How do you trade wave 2? 
When it appears that a five-wave move-up is complete in the wave one, run the Fibonacci tool to project potential retracements for the wave two. Then, either position yourself immediately short with a stop loss above the top of wave one, or wait for the A down, B up, and sell there for a wave C down. Once the C wave has completed, you can place a buy with a stop below the start of wave one. This is a low risk trade entry for the wave three move. The guideline of alternation dictates that wave four is a sideways correction of wave three because wave two is a zigzag correction, in this example of course. Wave four targets are 0.236 times wave three, 0.382 times wave 3, and 0.5 times wave 3. When wave 3 is complete, use the Fibonacci tool to find the retracement levels for wave 4. Wave 4 is a bit different from wave 2 in its retracement. Because its corrections are usually sideways and not sharp, it means that the corrections are usually between 38.2% and 50% of the Wave 3 move. Again, the Wave 4 personality is such that for those traders that missed the Wave 3 opportunity to buy, they are looking to buy this Wave 4 retracement for the Wave 5 move up. Similarly, for those traders that bought the Wave 3, they might look to take profits at this level. Regardless, because new buyers are coming into the market, Wave 4 doesn't retrace as much as Wave 2. In fact, sometimes the uptrend is so strong that Wave 4 only retraces 23.6% of Wave 3. Corrective wave targets vary by pattern. Zigzags travel in three ways, as in this example, and both the Wave B and C segments have their own targets. In Zigzag Wave 2, the B retracement of wave A depends on the wave B pattern. For example, if B is a zigzag, B will retrace between 50 and 79 percent of A. If B is a running triangle, B will retrace between 10 and 40 percent of A. Finally, if B is a triangle, B will retrace between 38.2 and 50% of A. Wave C targets are as follows. 0.618 times wave A, 1 times wave A, and 1.618 times wave A. The most common wave C target is 1 times wave A, followed by 1.618 times wave A. A second point worth mentioning is that of channeling a zigzag correction. A line connecting the beginning of wave A and the end of wave B is often parallel to a line connecting the ends of waves A and C. For forecasting the end of wave C, it often ends on a parallel line off of the end of wave A. This wave, for example, is that of an irregular flat. If, however, wave 4 is a regular flat, where wave B does not go above the start of wave A, usually waves A, B, and C are equal. Wave B always retraces to at least 90% of A. If wave 4 is an irregular or expanded flat, as in this example, then wave B is usually 1.236 times wave A, or 1.382 times wave A. Wave C is usually 1.618 times wave A or 2.618 times wave A. If wave 4 is a running flat, then wave B is usually more than 1 times wave A. And wave C does not extend beyond the end of wave A. The characteristic of a running flat is that the trend is very strong and wave C falls short of the typical move one can expect. Triangles have their own wave targets. If wave 4 is a symmetrical ascending or descending triangle, most commonly 
Each subwave is 0.618 times the length of the previous alternate subwave. Wave E is 0.618 times wave C and 0.382 times wave A. Wave C is 0.618 times wave A and wave D is 0.618 times wave B. The next most common relationship is each subwave is 0.618 times the previous adjacent subwave. Wave E is 0.618 times wave D, 0.382 times wave C, 0.236 times wave B, and 0.146 times wave A. If wave 4 is a reverse symmetrical or expanding triangle, then wave E is 1.618 times wave C. Wave D is 1.618 times wave B, and wave C is 1.618 times wave A. The next most common relationship is 1.618 times the previous adjacent subwave. Wave E is 1.618 times wave D, 2.618 times wave C, 4.236 times wave B, and 6.854 times wave A. This is the conclusion of the learning objects. Please continue on to the quiz.